In this video, we're going to start discussing barriers to effective problem solving. In particular, we're going to go over irrelevant information and functional fixedness. So to begin, irrelevant information is information that is included with the problem that is not related to or required to solve the problem. The reason why irrelevant information is an issue is because people generally believe that they need to use all the information that they're provided with to solve a problem. However, that's often not the case. So what that means is, if people want to solve problems efficiently, they need to be able to figure out what information is relevant and what information is irrelevant. So as an example, 30% of residents in Boston have unlisted telephone numbers. If you randomly select 150 names from the Boston Telephone Directory, how many of these people would you expect to have unlisted phone numbers? All right, so we have a problem, and of course you can take a few moments to try to think what the answer is. So if you are looking at the question, you're provided some information, right? 30% of residents have unlisted phone numbers, and you selected 150 names from the Boston Telephone Book. A lot of people who are trying to answer this question will think, oh, I'm given 30% in 150. The answer must be 30% of 150, or 45 people. However, that's not the case. The answer to this question is none. And that's because all 150 names were taken from the Boston Telephone Directory. If they're in the Telephone Directory, that means all of their numbers are listed. Right? So this is an example of how irrelevant information, the 30%, is a distractor and not required to answer the question. I also want to note that this is not just for this type of problem, but you'll often see this on the MCAT exam. Very often for physics questions or chemistry questions, they like to give you numbers and values that you don't need to use to solve the problem. Okay, so next let's go over functional fixedness. This is the tendency to perceive objects only in terms of their most common uses. So to understand how this works, let's consider the example of the string problem. We've looked at this before, but if you take a look at this diagram, we will remind you what the situation is. You have two strings that hang from the ceiling that need to be tied together. They are too far apart to allow a person to grab one and walk to the other. On the table is a pair of pliers. How can this be done? Okay, so most people aren't able to figure out the answer to this problem. And the main reason why is because when they look at the pair of pliers, they only think of it as a tool that can be used to hold, bend, or compress objects. And they don't see how that can possibly be useful for solving this string problem. However, if you take a look at this solution in this diagram, you'll see what they're missing. Right? Pliers can be used to hold, bend, or compress objects, but that's not the only way you can use a plier. You can, for example, connect a plier as a pendulum, swing the pendulum back and forth so that as you're holding one string, you're able to grab the other string. So that's the solution to this problem, and a good demonstration of what functional fixedness is.